Okay. Take good care of this while I figure the... Alright. So I'll just head back up now? Yes. Okay. You good. don't want to go to lunch? No, I'm good. It's 12.15. 1215? Mm -hmm. Okay. You can just make it 12 and call that even. I'll put that in the car. I don't really need the change. What? No, I say the time is 1215. Oh, oh, I thought you were calculating money. No. I'm doing the gasoline. 27 miles, we said? Yes. And you get 20 miles a gallon? Mm -hmm. So is that three gallons? She loves your TV show. Hey, good! Hey, I love your TV show. Way to go, way to go. Where do you live? What town? I live in Claverick, and I just caught it completely by accident one day. Oh, that's great. But I just saw you in the parking lot. Here. What'd you say? <laughs> I said I love your TV show. Yeah, hey, go, way to go for Claverick. Yeah, I just wanted you to know. What? What's your name? I'll say hello to you. My name is Sydney Hall. Let me get it down. First name is what? Cindy. Sissy Hall. Cindy. -L -L. I'm a retired school teacher. Good for you. And you're Cindy? Yeah. Good, Cindy. In Clover Rock, right? Thank you. Right, let's get some behind her. Right. Yeah. Watch it, honey. There's somebody behind you. I know. You're not going that way. We're going, yeah, we're going to the right, so it's okay. No, you're not. To get back to... No, honey. Oh, were you thinking I was going to go that way? No, well, I didn't want to go that way. Well, this is the way we came from, so this is where I'm going back. No, it isn't where you came from. You came from over there, sweet. Oh, did we? Yeah, so turn around. That's it. Good place to turn around. Where's that going? This is where FedEx is, or UPS, or something. Now you go that way. This is the apple place, where they store the apples all winter long. Isn't that fun? And she loves a TV show. Right? Yeah. So we'll say hello to her in big letters. That's for you, Devin, okay? I'll put yeah, it on. Yeah, that'll be one of my uh, titles I'm getting. Yeah, I bet you'll come up with something creative. So, um, you paid 60 something dollars to leave that computer there? I paid 50. Oh, you just put the deposit in? Yeah. Okay. So you. So you're going to pay the other. What was the difference? 50 I to think 60, it's a, like 6, 14, 90, 15, 16. So it's about it was what sixteen dollars for that. It, the, yeah, for what they're gonna do? If they're gonna, just for their yep. appraisal. Yep. And then they'll recommend probably since they fell for the same things I thought it was. They'll probably recommend you replace a piece inside the computer, which can cost a sum of money, like I said. And then you're gonna hopefully get your deposit. I paid my deposit. Right, don't you get your deposit done when you're Oh, okay, then I pay my $20, you mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. crap, red. Can't you go on right on red? No. Well, not into traffic. No, you can't. You can't. Okay, now I'm finishing. Um, so, oh, we are, you, we want 27 miles. Uh, we'll round it off to 30. How much is gasoline a gallon? 270-something. 273, 75, something in the 70s. All right, we'll round it off to three. Are you listening to all these advantages I'm giving you? Yeah, I am. I'm also keeping on track. And three light. times three is nine. That's nine dollars for gasoline. Mm. Got it? Got it. Okay. Oh, I'll try to find this money. <clears throat> It's so nice to take her dog instead of leave the dog at home.
So it's nine dollars for gas and twenty dollars for the trip, right? To travel. Yeah. That's twenty-nine dollars. Yes. And you've got only a twenty. Oh, we have to get gasoline. Right. You want to fill that tank? Yeah, but I would for go way up to Cumberland. To yeah, I am. I'm going to go back towards where we live. Yeah. What was your question before that? I said you you want to fill up that tank that you got the in the tub? black bag. Yeah, the, the tub. tub. Yeah, yeah. you're going to fill mm -hmm. that. Okay. Yeah. See this here? How much do I owe you? That's twenty four. So just five dollars. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll keep it down here since I'm driving. And what do you say? Thank you very much. Oh, okay. No, I say I need to write a receipt, but then I say thank you. Oh, okay. We didn't get a receipt, five dollars for helping veterans. Uh, yeah. I'll write that down. Yeah. Donation unreceipted. Pulses move, stoop to my weakness, my DSO heart, and make me love thee as I ought to love. We're filling the gas jug for the 1980 Lincoln. Devin, will you pass me my briefcase? Uh, sure, let me put this away. Please. There's the overseas. Okay, here's perishable. Yeah, that was the one from top right, so that was in the back seat. Yep. That's all That's what? Watermelon. Oh, that's okay, yeah. Staples, the health store, and these are the rest of the bags. Where is the uh, uh, things from ShopRite? There? Those are at ShopRite. All right, and then where is our perishable bag from Walmart? There is more than one perishable bag. Where is he? The gray one? Oh, you mean the freezer bag? Yeah. This is the freezer bag. Oh, okay. There's a lot more perishables, though. There's also fruits and vegetables scattered about. Oh, yeah, but they don't perish within. You know. No, no, no these are the only ones that have to go in the freezer. Well, they're heat sensitive. So you think you should cash in the plastic bags and get only cloth bags? So that's that's the kind of the idea behind those. Is And you're someone I know who most definitely does not take bags from the store, which is the intention, is that you get... Um, those reusable bags. Like these, cloth bags. Yeah, yeah they're like a dollar a piece. Yeah, we'll buy some. 
and then you yeah, use those instead of using plastic bags so they don't throw away plastic bags and yeah. pollute them. And okay, so we'll put that on the list for next uh, October 2nd, right? Sure. Is Saturday October 2nd? I'm not sure. Well, yeah, it is. October 1st is Friday. Okay. Alright, well, that's everything I believe out of the car. Clean. So, alrighty, that's everything. You, you sure you got everything, huh? Yep. Let Even me just out. double check, you know, just for the. Yep. Yep. At three. Yep. Oh, it was fun. Thank you very much. Yep. No, thank you too. The tofuti, that's a vegetarian ice cream, is delicious. That's all been put away. And here's all of the vegetarian sausage, lasagna, sweet and sour, uh, hamburgers, and chicken nuggets, all vegetarian. They've been put away. And now we put on three three more bags and we can collapse in the sanctuary and rest. Here's the poor tree that fell, folks. It is so sad. This is the tree that just missed Devon. See, it fell in the mid's yard and it, if it had fallen into the road, it would have hit Devon within yet about five seconds of grace. I think it fell just about five seconds before he got to that spot. But here it is, and John Dean with his great big back hole cleared it up. Look at that magnificent creation that God worked on so long. So many years. Look at it. It's raining now, folks. We gotta go in. But there it is. A very sad scene. Look at the work. Let me show you the trunk. A couple of years ago, the north side of it cracked open. Where you going, baby? Where you going? You come back. I want to feed you. I think I got you some yeast pills. And this year, this piece fell, and it fell right where we're standing. And John Dean, with his back hole, pushed it over there. And there's another kitty cat. Come on, kitty cats. Come on, we got to get everything in. It's beginning to rain hard. Come on, kitties. Come on, kitty, 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 kitty. We're putting away. We put away 15 bags. Now we're going to put away the cans and the bottles. No, the cans and the bags. Pretty blue sky. All blue, all around, no aerosol. The evil ones are taking Labor Day weekend off. That's what it is.
This is Labor Day Sunday. Thank you for giving the birds something to eat. Have a heart. Give them this day their daily bread and deliver them from evil. Deliver them from the evil one. From the sanctuary, there's a trademark of the sanctuary, the feet up. Now, there's a book called Men Who Have Walked With God. What I'm going to do, folks, is to you and I together, let's have five minutes of meditation, which is what the Sabbath is sort of about, is rather about. Okay, just a minute, I'll set the timer. Start. So there's this book, Men Who Have Walked With God. And it's about those who focused on God, the Force, the Source, the Creativity, or whatever name you want to give our great father, our great friend, our great progenitor. Okay. Renouncement of the world. Regimen of saintly living. Spiritual search. All of these words came from men who have walked with God. By Sheldon Sheedy, published in 1945, by Alfred A. Knopf. 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 A name that's hard to pronounce at the beginning and hard to pronounce at the end. Knopf. Now, what is the persuasion? An extinction? of the material. Well, not maybe total, but certainly an extinction of 85% of our materialism. That's about all I see. What do you see? Entry into light. Without giving up our accustomed place in society, what is that for you? Are you a teacher? Are you a superintendent of schools? Are you a school board member? Are you a mayor? A supervisor? A New York State trooper? Without giving up our accustomed places to, in society to follow the path of enlightenment, controlling mortal desires, 
rather than extinguishing mortal desires. Ever mindful of the law of karma. What is karma? I don't know much about that. It's the law that if you do good, good will return to you. Is that what it is? And ever mindful of the eightfold rules of noble conduct. That sounds good, doesn't it? Noble conduct and not ignoble conduct. That's our five minutes. Let's go beyond that. Stop. Let's go beyond that. I think this is also a timer. Oh, I guess it isn't. I want to go beyond that. We'll use the clock. That's nine o'clock. Okay, it's 8.55. Um, yes, we want noble conduct, that's for sure. And no ignoble conduct. Finding signs of the oneness. Of life, that is for sure. There's just one, and that is God. And you and I are some of God. Hmm. We're some of God. That's why we're always looking for our Father, our God. Our origin. Because we're some of God. Finding signs of the oneness of life and the infinity of life. Well, I guess in a way we're infinity because whatever we're made of, the elements and the compounds, go on to other places and start new life, I guess. There's infinity like that. But Somehow there's an infinity of soul, isn't there? You know, the person that you are, the soul that you are, it will live on in the pe people who knew you, or write about you, or tell about you. But if you aren't written about or told about or remembered, like 99.9% .9 of the human race, then you're not going to have infinity. Every personality is different. God creates all these personalities and everyone is different just as every face is different. You notice that in the cats. Each of them has such a distinct personality. They have their own ways. And they're different, so different from each other. Where do we go from here? Oh, yes. This is the thing I like about Buddha. Finding signs of the oneness an infinity of life in nature. I like that. He was so compassionate. And that's why I think it's way ahead of Christianity. Because Christianity is so cruel. People daily bludgeon and agonize and terrorize and torment 
animals daily. They think they have domain over the animals. They don't. So that's, I like that about Buddhism. The compassion. Finding signs of the oneness and infinity of life in nature rather than relegating attainment to a time after death. Yeah, I can't see that. I can't see sitting and thinking and thinking and thinking and meditating in the time after death. I can't see it. That's the one thing I do like about Christianity, is the work ethic. They work hard. They get the work done. Or at least they keep trying to get it done. So what's that, our meditation for ten minutes? No, the Averio says seven minutes. Now look at this image. How clear and sharp do you think it is? This camera is set on I think 19 hours. Now let's turn it off and set it on one hour or whatever. I'll tell you in a minute. Are you still in the sanctuary, Glendora? Are you still thinking about... Or is this worldly? Mm, I don't know. No, I don't want Zoom. Over here on the LED, I think there's a camera thing you turn off to stop it. So he set it on <clears throat> the lowest speed. Do you see any better? <clears throat> improvement in the quality of the picture. So we'll do it on this speed for five minutes. See what you think. So was that material or was that spiritual? Don't know. It was certainly God's great creation to make such a camcorder as this. And it certainly fills you with wonder and respect and admiration. United with approbation Deserving the utmost esteem. So from the sanctuary, from the sanctuary, and the Averio gives you the date and the time. Labor Day Sunday, Labor Day Sabbath. Thank you for being a vegetarian kitty and eating your vegetarian sausages. Yes, and eating seven B12. <laughs> Why do you like yeast pills so much? I never knew a cat that liked yeast pills. And eat them one after another, crunch, crunch, crunch. You know that I love you? Yes. You do bad things, but you're sort of lovable. Holding the camera with one hand and combing you with another. You didn't know I was an artist, did you folks? I'm an artist. See? 
stroke of the brush. Is that a sore place, honey? Oh, okay. He really is an interesting cat. I think you leave the property, though. I think you left the property in the middle of the night. You stayed in and slept a while. Then you meowed in the middle of the night and wanted to go out. And I think you left the property and didn't come back until now at 9.30 a.m. You mustn't leave the property. You have three acres. That's enough. You are land gentry. You own three acres. You don't have to leave this property. You don't have to go out into the road. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Supposing there were just people on earth and no animals, it would be kind of barren, wouldn't it? There were nothing but people and no other mammals. Okay, we're still in the sanctuary and it's still Sabbath. And it's no labor on Labor Day Sabbath, Labor Day Sunday. And we're going to do another meditation. Oh, they're fun. The great big letters. Why? I don't know. They're just fun. Uh, the uh, poison in the sky came in, folks. Even on Labor Day Sabbath, they're not going to leave our sky pristine. It's quite a breeze, too. It's rattling the screen door. Meditation, strong word, Glendora, you get back onto eating correctly, and you stop wandering around. You fast until 5 o'clock and you eat, first of all, hot cereal. Hot cereal, like malto meal or wheatina or farina. And then you eat your nut fruit shake. Bananas, pineapple juice, oatmeal, cashews, all blended, ground up. Thick shake, delicious. And you eat peanut butter. And you make the crust or the biscuits to put it on. And you eat ground up nuts. And you eat fresh fruit and fresh vegetables. This is the time of year of it, the harvest. No more falling off of the what did uh, what did Sheldon Cheney call it? The regimen of saintly living. Well, this is the regimen of saintly eating, and you get back onto it. And don't you let anything take you off, folks? Can you see those five black lines coming from his forehead? To the back of his neck. Now you tell me how God does that. Every piece of fur has to be colored just right. And he must have millions of pieces of fur. And come out to that pattern. Can you count five? One, two, three, four, five. Now that's advancement. That's progress.
This is Dot Com eating her vegetarian sausages that we bought at Wright ShopRite yesterday. Oh, I'm so glad. Now, folks, I want to show you a horrible thing. There's a beautiful blue, isn't it? Now, isn't it a sin to ruin it with these dirty, poisonous clouds? On Labor Day Sabbath? Now, that's what we're going to discuss next. These evil ones used to exude streaks that would expand and expand and expand and then they go back and forth streak after streak, streak after streak until they entirely ruined the sky and the blue was gone. And we had that gloomy overcast. Now, like cereal, breakfast cereal, they're popping out these fake cumulus clouds, these pops all over the sky. That leaves some blue, but eventually it will all be dingy dark and poisonous. Now, let's do a meditation. I, re I reveal, Buddha Gautama said, suffering and the extinction of suffering. It is suffering to do what they're doing to our sky. Now, let's reveal the extinction of suffering. Suffering exists. There is a cause of suffering. The cause of suffering can be removed. Says Chini. Gautama thus began by speaking a language understood by all people. From the generalized promise that, quote, the cause of suffering can be removed, unquote, Gautama Buddha went on to the more specific promise that a religion a realization of a truth would bring cessation of suffering. What truths do you realize? What truths do you realize? The truth that we should be good instead of bad the truth that we should be kind and never cruel. The truth from Isaiah 11, 6, that they shall not hurt nor destroy on God's holy mountain. The truth that for we shall be, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of God. That's a truth.
what other truth that we should spend time thinking about the Creator, what the Creator has done, what the Creator is doing, and what the Creator is going to do. Realization of a truth. What truth have we realized? And realization of a truth will bring an end to the suffering. It will bring an end of this sky that the suffering is. And folks, Buddha is talking about whose suffering? The pilgrim's suffering? His own suffering? His disciples' suffering? Or is he talking about the suffering of others? The suffering of animals? Realization of a truth would bring cessation of suffering by following the path the pilgrim would reach extinction of sorrow with extinction of desire, lust, and egoism. I think that's a realization of a truth, don't you folks? The extinction of egoism. That's what we have to do. The extinction of egoism. It would be an extreme to affect the extinction of desire, wouldn't it? But unquestionably, the control of desiring. Don't you think our lives are too materialistic and not enough spiritualistic? Don't you think so? Doesn't it have something to do with people being dissatisfied most of the time and talking about things that are ugly instead of things that are beautiful. Okay, that's the end of that meditation. Seven minutes and 17 seconds down to 13 hours and one minute. This has been an almost perfect Sabbath so far. But on the Sabbath, folks, don't you have to keep the house clean? And don't you have to keep your body clean? And don't you have to take care of your cats? And keep things organized? Yes. But not less than an hour if you can, or an hour here and an hour later. But what's what saves that? Well, your pure thoughts. All the time you think about the good things. For instance, you think about this. The mysticism of Gautama is of a special sort. He dreams and speaks of the bliss of a life eternal. Let us dream and speak of a life of bliss present, currently. Emergence in the uncreate. Now, what is that? It 
Everything created is by the Creator. Of the inexpressibly blissful illumination. Yes, right there. Stop there. The inexpressibly blissful illumination. Sure. While you're doing your work, think of that. You know, while you're doing your cleaning. Oftenness, his word for mystic realization is enlightenment. Okay. But I think you know what he's talking about. And I think you can have it. It's your thinking again. It all goes back to your thinking. What you choose to think about. You can choose to think about. Enlightenment. Enlightenment is preparation on the way to supreme attainment. Well, you know what that is. Supreme attainment, the Holy Grail. We know what that is, don't we? Sure. All good thought. Nothing negative, second level, trivial, ugly. All good thought. Enlightenment. Supreme attainment. Blissful illumina illumination. Blissful illumination. It would be incorrect, says Sheldon Cheney, in strictest interpretation, to speak of Gautama as one of the people who have walked with God. His mind rejected the idea of personified deity and so does mine folks doesn't yours a personified deity anthropomorphism God is like people my mind rejects it too it's sort of energy or electromagnetic waves or whatever our five minutes is up. Let's continue, though. Reset the timer. His mind rejected the idea of personified deity, and he discouraged his disciples from speculating upon the nature of that which is above all. Yeah, we know what that is. We know what's above all. Yeah? We know that. Again, it's thinking, isn't it? It's all in thought. Thought. His mind rejected the idea of personified deity and he discouraged his disciples from speculating upon the nature of that which is above all. Above all is the same as enlightenment, isn't it? It's the same as the bliss. It's the same as Blissful illumination.
the cause of it all, the cause of all, which is above all, which is the cause of all, which is the nature of oneness. I don't have a problem with that. Do you? I can see that. I can comprehend that, can't you? Three first message. Hi there, this is Virginia calling. I just wondered if you got that pie. I didn't like to leave it outside, but I didn't know what else to do. Okay? Hope it was okay. Bye bye. Well, Virginia. First message deleted. No more messages. Virginia, I didn't leave it outside either. It went inside very fast. It was a delicious pie. And uh, I thank you for it. And uh, I'm going to send her either $10 or $20, folks. Uh, Virginia from Chatham Methodist Church. Uh, they're going to have a church supper soon. I think I might, if I can find somebody to drive me over and drive me back. I'll, uh, hmm, I ought to find out when that is. And I'll go just for the desserts. I won't eat their, the animals that they ruin and slaughter and, and torture. I won't do that. But I'll eat the desserts and their vegetables. Uh, Benny says, my wife and I had words. The trouble is, Benny said, I never got a chance to use mine. Good morning, everybody, from the sanctuary. Amadeus is reporting, and dot com is reporting on the lap. And Sebastian, you're too late, honey. I can't disturb dot com and get up and let you in. You should have been here 20 minutes earlier. even an hour earlier. Retreat starts at, uh, sanctuary starts at 5.55 a.m. But I can't disturb Dottie Come. Well, folks, this is Labor Day. And it's misnamed. It's a misnomer. It should be called No Labor Day. And it's in honor of the working people. Is that you? And No Labor Day is what a Sabbath day is, right? No labor on the Sabbath. And I need your help, no labor, and to control the desires, control the lusts, control the egoism. Now, how are we going to do that? I want to go out and expand to chat with Glendora and add new municipalities such as Plainville, and keep after East Hartford until they do what they're supposed to do and check up on Winstead and I still have to keep after Manchester, Connecticut, Lori Batanani to do what she's supposed to do. She told Albert Lebron, according to Albert Lebron, I will never play her programs. Huh. Batanani does not denies that. So that's a desire. we got to get rid of these desires, right? Let a chat with Glendora go. Although Cindy Cook says that I enjoy your show. Karen McIntyre says I wouldn't miss it. And that's every night for two hours. 
and Kinderhook. I need your help, folks. It's too materialistic. It's not enough spiritualistic. You go out on one of these trips to expand a chat with Glendora, it's all day. A big day, like 16 hours. And it's like two, three hundred dollars. Pay the driver, pay the gasoline, buy them lunch. Give them presents, buy them what they want. Well, did we cover the last paragraph here on this sheet of about Buddha, written by Sheldon Cheney, published by Alfred Knopf in 1945? No other man among men, it has been said, was so godless. Well, so godlike. That's our five-minute meditation. That I can go for. Godlike and godless. I think we're wrong to personify God, I think we're wrong to personify the source, the creative force, the power. Although we are some of it, although we are made out of it, the same elements, the same compounds, the same Carbons, the same amino acids and all those things were made from the same that started the uh, whole process of creation. Nevertheless, his glorification of the law, now he's talking about the law that's above man-made authority and laws which are ridiculous for the most part. Nevertheless, his glorification of the law and his conception of the boundless light of immortality. I don't get that immortality. Do you? And of a supreme wisdom. I get that one. That's easy. And his teaching of an inevitable movement or process beginning in a cause. Yep, that all makes sense to us, doesn't it? All those ideas tremble upon the verge of a conception or deity or God. In the spiritual region in which the mystic to which the mystic rises, it would seem to matter little whether the yearning has been toward a somewhat visualized or personalized God. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, what difference does it make to a mystic? Or toward an capital A absolute or a capital L light or a capital L liberation. 
in the sublimest spiritual conscious. And that's where the page ends. And this all makes sense to me. But I need your help. We need to rise above the worldly. The desires, the lusts, the egoism, the self. Those are all the things that bring unhappiness. Oh, I get it. Those are the things that bring suffering. They are the cause of suffering. Is that what he's saying? And if you rise above those things, if you reach the mystic height, then you've eliminated the cause of suffering. Oh. Again, I ask you, whose suffering is he talking about? Your suffering, my suffering, or the suffering of the animals, the cows, the pigs, the horses, the hens, the turkeys? How do we eliminate their suffering? 